Dear Engineers, Welcome to Veda Gate Academy and welcome to the world of opportunities. The subject here for you is Digital Logic Design. The topic itself is mentioning it is a logic based subject. Neither mathematics involved nor physics involved. It is the easiest subject out of all which you can learn very comfortably and score good amount of marks which is common for electronics, electrical and instrumentation branch of engineering. Now let us see the main titles of this topic and the reference books in the very first introduction. Yeah, Digital Logic Design, Computer Architecture, Microprocessor for ECE and ECE has three topics in it, DLD, CVOA, MP. Of course, CVOA is a very short, uh, uh, no, uh, very small uh, topic in a short weightage. Microprocessors, of course, a very important topic for ECE and uh, DLD MPMC for EIE and MPMC is what microprocessors, microcontrollers, digital logic design and uh, triple E, it's only DLD, neither MPMC nor CVOA. I repeat, digital logic design, computer architecture, a small part and microprocessor for ECE and uh, digital logic design and MPMC, microprocessor, microcontroller for instrumentation and for triple E, it's only DLD. And if you could see the main contents of this uh, subject, uh, basics, which is having a fundamental deal of all the topics, which includes uh, number systems and data formats, logic gates, Boolean algebra, K-maps and prime implicants, and then goes to combinational logic circuits, combinational digital circuits, arithmetic circuits, code converters, comparators, parity developer, decoder, encoder, muxer, demuxer, and you have a, a very important topic uh, comes in sequential digital circuits, flip-flops, registers, counters and memories and the sequence detectors. And then goes to analog to digital, digital to analog converters, ADC and DSC, which has a lot of importance and weightage in the subject. And logic families, logic IC families only for ECE. And basic structure of uh, diode and transistor background of uh, the logic gates. Uh, and or not NAND and nor diode and transistor based circuits and then goes with <coughs> comparing ECL, DTL, TTL, CMOS features and comparisons and then goes with uh, computer organizations only for EC as I told you and it's having uh, floating point notations and a few more important basic fundamentals of uh, uh, computer architecture and then goes with microprocessor only for EC and AI in detailed syllabus content let me give you after the a short discussion on the origin of the subject and the weightage of this subject in the gate examination and an average given like this. For electronics and communications, it is 8 to 10 marks in every paper. For instrumentation engineering, 8 to 12 marks in the paper and for triple E, it is 4 to 6 marks in the paper. For every gate paper, an average weightage for uh, from almost 10 years I can say and this is how given us ECE 8 to 10 marks, EIE 8 to 12 marks, triple E 4 to 6 marks and then let's talk from yeah, reference books. Uh, the books which are most familiar and I can say comfortable for uh, understanding the basics as well as competitive requirements of these ones. Digital Logic Design by Morris Mano and the Switching Theory Logic Design by Kohavi and the DLD and MP by RP Jain, Blue Pad for Theory and Black Pad for Problems. Once again, see the reference books, Digital Logic Design by Maurice Mano, Simplest and Fundamental Base Book, Switching Theory Logic Design by Kohavi, uh, for ECE it is better, for instrumentation and ECE, DLD and MP by RP Jain, Blue Pad and Black Pad, which is a comfortable base subject, base uh, textbook, uh, where people can easily understand the topics. And now, digital logic design and origin. You speak about any subject, invention base, origin base, of course, most important one to you know, begin. Because if you are very clear about where from and how, uh, by whom the subject has been invented and developed and look into those aspects and you are very much motivated to you know, involve in the subject to get the best out of it, I can say. Uh, origin, developments 
and applications. Even if you go to the interviews of a scientific based or technological based, uh, don't expect a Maxwell equation be asked in EMTL or number systems and fundamentals asked in DLD, KVL, KCL, basic fundamental in network analysis. Questions in a scientific region and technological region are always either on the origin based or on the development based or on the latest application based. So, whenever you learn any subject, it is always better to begin from origin, developments and latest applications. Then proceed to learn from fundamental layer and practice questions and competitive analysis. All this will help you to become perfect in the subject in the original subject way as well as to the competitive requirement. Whenever you speak about the origin of digital logic design, Yeah, digital logic design bases logic. Digital works with, as you know well, two-valued logic, two-state logic. I can say zero on one and low on high. The complete world of digital based rounding only between zero and one, as we all well known. And here I have a few questions. Is it true that digital logic design, digital technology is ruling the whole universe? Yes, it is. Right from a child education to the space link, it has happened to have a complete control on the digital technology. It is because, it is because digital technology is the simplest technology out of all, simplest logic out of all, which works with only zero and one. Never complicated language like decimal, neither even three state, uh, you know, uh, more than two states are involved. Two state language said to be the simplest logic in the world and universe, I can say. Uh, Maybe you can say that unistate language is more simple than two-state language, having only one symbol. But fine, having only one symbol, what will you do with that? You can't even compare. Say, I have number one with me. I have only number one with me. What is the state of that? It is only one. I can't, you know, just state anything on that. And uh, I should just be able to say whether one is less than something or greater than something to compare and to represent and to recognize minimum requirement is two. To state about one symbol, I need minimum another symbol. And I can also have three symbols, but it is more and it is unnecessary, I can say. I can say, uh, you know, three is uh, less than two and one. Or I can say three is less than two, which is simplest. Three is less than two is simplest than three is less than two and less than one. Right. So, to represent the state of signals, minimum requirement is 2, uni will not be enough, 3 will be more for the requirement. Hence, by language, a two-state logic is said to be the finest logic of uh, the digital logic design. Now, we need to first know who invented the word by logic. Who and when the word by logic is invented. By logic is the origin for digital logic design. And next, De Morgan laws. Most familiar laws which are used in uh, reduction techniques as you know well. D Morgan theorems. A, B, C whole bar equal to A bar plus B bar plus C bar. And A plus B plus C whole bar equal to A bar into C B bar into C bar. D Morgan theorems which are most familiar and important in digital logic evolutions. And then goes with Boolean algebra. You are well familiar about Boolean postulates, Boolean theorems which has a lot of you know, weight is in digital logic design. It can be, you know, say, said as computer mathematics. Boolean algebra, nothing but computer mathematics. And you, you, you need to know when does the Boolean algebra invented. And then computer, computer evolution. Uh, when does the first computer invented? How does it is developed into the later stages? And then vacuum tube technology, later which has come into the picture. And then Telecommunication switching network, the computer technology applied on a telecommunication switching network and then transistor evolution, transistor invention you can say and then IC technology when it has come to pack up in the integrated uh, you know uh, chip IC technology and then goes with the first microcomputer. Uh, all this evaluated to become a first microcomputer. So, in the origin of subject digital logic design, who are involved? By logic involved, D Morgan laws involved, Boolean algebra involved, computer, vacuum tube technology, and transistor, telecommunication switching network, 
IC technology and then microcomputer. Now let us see one by one who invented the logics and when. Guess when does biologic invented? I I just I'll give you a hint here that uh, computer the very first computer been invented uh, when by Charles Babbage. Is it in uh, BC? Is it after BC? Eighties? Of course, in eighties. When was it? Computer invention is almost done in 1800s uh, AD, 1800s AD. Now, when you look into this, I'm oh, sorry, 1900s AD. When you look into this, biologic invention is happened to be, you know, in the uh, system developed longer, longer, longer ago in BCs. I can say by the great, uh, you know, philosopher. Uh, he is said to be a father of uh, science and technology. Guess who's that? Biologic invention by a great philosopher. Who is said to be father of science and technology. If I am a science and technology student, father for me, father for you, father for the age of sciences. And he is none other than the great. Yes, Aristotle in 800 BC and he invented biologic. The great uh, scientist Aristotle in 800 BC invented biologic. And his statement was there could be a relation between two state logic and mathematics because the world is running on the two state and the natural phenomena of the nature is two state. Now or later, this or that, win or fail, do or die and you just take any feeling of a human and will always immediately have a two you know, ways to go. Thereby, the whole human uh, you know, requirement goes on the two state logic where there could be a mathematics implemented on two state logic. That is how he predicted on those days. And it was only a verbal prediction. He didn't have any proof for, for that. And he just left the statement. There could be a relation between two state logic and natural phenomena of the nature and the mathematics. If someone can you know, try to link them, of course, the technology can be a ruling. And uh, immediate after, the evolution happened. De Morgan has come into the picture to invent De Morgan laws in 1806. Between 800 BC and 1806, there was no moment, uh, you know, a proof for taken for Aristotle's biologic. But the first one who has taken De Morgan laws on, on two state logic, nothing but the scientist De Morgan in the year 1806. Later, Boolean has come into the picture in the year 1815 to give you a Boolean algebra. Computer mathematics, I already stated. And then it went to the first computer invention by Charles Bobbage in the year 1822. The first computer. Remember a home theater sized computer. The very first computer invented in the year 1822 by Charles Bobbage. It was called as a difference engine, right? Uh, it used to be like in a big room, almost like, uh, you know, uh, rice industry. Wheels, gears, raw chains, very big, very big home theater uh, uh, system based computer. And then it went with vacuum tube technology by J. F. Fleming in 1904. Vacuum tube technology by J. F. Fleming in 1904. And then telecommunication switching network, 1931 by Shannon, a great scientist in, uh, you know, communication networking. So he invented the first telecommunication switching network. And then it happened to go with transistor by Bell Labs USA in the year 1947. By J. L. Burden, W. H. Britain, and William Shockley, are three most famous names which you all know well on behalf of Bell Labs. William Shockley, J. L. Burden, W. H. Britain, or the great leaders invented transistor in the year 1947. And after that, I C technology by Robert Noise in 1959. Integrated chip technology. The first chip manufacturing happened by Robert Noise in the year 1959. And then Intel Corporation happened to be a leader of developing the first microcomputer, uh, looking all these things to be in common in the year 1970s, I can say, by the first uh, uh, chip of uh, microprocessor for 004. So, the great leaders involved in evolution of uh, the first microcomputer, biologic by the great father, uh, science and technology father Aristotle in 800 BC, and uh, De Morgan laws in 1806. Boolean algebra in 1815, basic computer home theater sized in the year 1822, 
vacuum tube in the year 1904 and uh, you went on uh, telecommunication switching network 1931 transistor 1947 IC technology 1959 the first microcomputer the leader in 1970s by Intel Corporation the credit of developing a first microcomputer went to Intel Corporation thereby Intel has become the leader of the world of technology which you are all well known next coming to after origin developments will come into the picture yes to explain the developments and I have one uh, most important and famous interview question happened to be under a scientific platform. I remember a brand steward ARDO has raised this question to an engineer of electronics and communication who went for a scientific job after qualifying in the written examination. Yes, junior scientist test JRS, junior research scientist. After crossing that, uh, he faced this uh, interview question from a leader, scientific leader. Digital technology, is it a biologic based or a biologic based? Uh, silly and funny. Digital technology, is it a biologic based or a biologic based? Can you guess? Uh, it is definitely a biologic based. Uh, we already learned enough on that. It works in two state logic. It works in 0 and 1. Hence, we'll call it as biologic based. But what is the question of asking about biologic based? And in the next uh, discussions, let us see whether this topic biology, biologic, uh, you know, behind the digital is true or not. Yeah, the first microcomputer happened to be developed in the year 1970s by Intel Corporation, the number 4004. Next evolution, 8008, 8080, 8085. 8085 is said to be the first standard 8-bit microcomputer, as you all know well. And then 8086, 8088. And then 186, 286, 386, 486, 586. In the sequence, Pentium Pro 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pentium processors. And then went to dual cores and core duals. And then went to Celeron, the leader, uh, Intel Corporation. And then <coughs> it went on with the discussion of, yeah, here I have uh, uh, know, a question to ask you and as well as uh, a discussion held in, uh, uh, I can say, scientific meet, world scientific meet uh, happened in California uh, by leading companies like IBM, uh, Intel Corporation, Texas Instruments, MCS Technology and leaders, Zilog even, a lot of lot of leading companies, scientific teams have gathered in one place to have a, a great discussion, great uh, you know, conversation for scientific evolution, so I can say. <clears throat> yeah. Now, there was a question raised in the scientific uh, you know, seminar, I can say, discussion. Uh, which one is the smallest in size and fastest in universe? Smallest in the size in the universe and the fastest in the speed in the universe. Uh, we have an answer for this. We are well known. Smallest in the size is uh, electron in an atom, of course. And fastest traveling is light ray, correct? So, electron in an atom and light ray. For this, the proof we have, single electron based transistor. We, which we are well known about that single electron based transistor which makes an action of uh, emitter base collector complete and uh, in the size of single electron fastest like light ray that can produce it seems a uh, light ray speed in the communication to work on the fastest uh, uh, you know uh, developed electronic component working on and then if you conclude single electron based transistor is said to be the smallest in the size fastest like a light ray in the signal transmission in electronic uh, technology and I have a question technology faster than light do we have any technology faster than light thank god when we concluded light is the fastest traveling element how could we raise a question faster than light uh, looking to be uh, silly and foolish but but surprising and funny, uh, 
uh, a scientist from Intel Corporation has raised you know answer for this question, stating yes, there is there is an electronic uh, component or there is you know an event where it can be uh, faster than light. It is faster than light. And whole team of scientific uh, community was shocked to uh, get this answer from Intel Corporation and then uh, waiting for the reply. You guess, if there is something faster than light, what is that? Which we never come across so far. If there is something faster than light, what is that? Uh, I know, whole hall is, you know, curiously waiting, you know, for that uh, answer by Intel scientific team. The answer given by the Intel scientific team, yes, the component, sorry, the signal which can make, uh, you know, uh, the transmission faster than light is, of course, the feeling of a human. The feeling of a human can travel faster than light 100%. Through a memory link, the feeling, feeling of a human is the fastest set to be in the universe so far. And you all know well, even you store years and years ago in your brain, one image or one picture or one place and uh, through a memory link you can just travel fastest uh, you know, than anything in the universe. Now come to speak if a feeling of a human is said to be the fastest than anything in the signal communication uh, how do we implement this using in the technology is our discussion here and we also raised the question previously that is a digital technology is a biologic or a biologic you remember interlinking these both let me give you uh, the developments in one by one sequence yes we stopped here in the previous slide first microcomputer 4004 pentium dual core celeron and further and you know well, the technology went ahead in developing electronic chips like uh, read-only memory, programmable read-only memory, ROM, PROM, EPROM, and UVPROM, PLA, PAL, FPGA, FPLA. And in the consequences, it went on developing a lot of devices. Now, uh, on the same scientific meet, which I told you in California conducted by Intel Corporation, and they have, you know, uh, given a great invention, great invention on that day. Uh, people were surprising and waiting for that. And uh, they got to have a small rectangular shaped uh, glass boxes. Yes, glass boxes. And then being given to uh, every individual in the scientific meet, almost around 40 to 50 are there. And when they open with the hook, you know, there is a hook like a small briefcase. When they open, they could see some electronic circuit inside that. Uh, when they invested some time on that, they, they just find that uh, it is like a computer. Computer in the shape of a rectangle, uh, in the size of an ATM card, built in a small glass box. As soon, uh, you find it as a computer and you will immediately uh, search for IO, right? Input output devices. And I was not given yet. And then people were discussing how to operate that. After a few minutes, and everyone has given with uh, you know spectacles like uh, 3d goggles yes when they were that when they switch on the pin on the computer they started coming across signals transmission between the spectacles and this device thank god then they come across they came to know that iO in built of spectacles thank god so iO is in built of spectacles to operate a small glass packed box of atm card sized computer wondering that's how the technology today is. Digital technology is so high, bringing up a complete computer in the size of an ATM card, operating with, uh, you know, IO in built of spectacles. This development in the scientific perspective, defense perspective, security perspective, think how it can deal and how, you know, it can blast in uh, making a lot of, lot of uh, feasible results. Yes, of course. Wherever you go, whatever you see, whomever you speak, everything is caught by this. Simple. You just come to home, connect to your PC, the whole world is in front of you. With ATM card sized computer in your pocket, IO in built of your spectacles, you are a king of technology, ruling the universe. Great. And that's how ATM card sized computer is said to be the latest uh, evolution uh, happened to be in the electronics uh, and computer technology, I can say. Beyond it, 
the question which was impending, which you all know, is uh, digital technology is a biologic or a biologic based. Went ahead and we were discussing about uh, uh, the feeling of a human can travel more faster than light. You remember? We were just talking about fastest than uh, light, faster than light, the feeling of a human. And uh, building up all these things together, structuring DNA based chip technology happened to be more or less latest DNA based ROMs and RAMs to the computer. So DNA based chip technology, when it has been coming to the picture, where it has happened to be, where uh, uh, the signal communication rate of digital is said to be the human feeling transmission rate. Thank God. From where to where we came? Right from the great Aristotle prediction in 800s BC that biologic can rule the universe, by today it happened to be. Yes, the evolutions have come slowly in the span of, uh, I can say, 1900s beginning, these all structured, 1970s, the Intel Corporation taken a computer, that's about 30 years and here about 20. Within the span of 50 years, the technology touching and crossing universal limitations. Great. Touching universal limitation by designing a smallest to possible component with the fastest traveling rate, nothing but a single electron based transistor. And then crossing the universal limitations where the signal transmission rate of digital happened to be a human feeling transmission rate. Thank God. What more you want? I hope uh, to learn any subject of engineering, uh, science and uh, you know, fundamental origin is a very important one to know. If you know the origin and evolutions and developments, people involved, how did they, uh, you know, uh, brought the technology to this level and you will be very much motivated to involve you as a part of it to get the best of it. And uh, the subject engineering itself is a wonder. It is opening the secrets of nature. Can I say that? Yeah, it is. It is opening the secrets of nature and without any communication media, wireless transmission, one signal which has been recorded here, which has been picturized here, which has been, uh, I can say, uh, taken a video is traveling to millions of kilometers in a fraction of part of second, which you all know well. This technology developed by whom? By you, by me. By the scientists, I can say, I mean, by our senior uh, generation who involved with a lot of enthusiasm, excitement and with a lot of interest in the technology developing on. And uh, now coming to the picture, the responsibility of engineer is not only study about technology, but also take technology ahead. Today, we are able to enjoy the technological evolutions, technological developments because our previous community, previous scientific community given a great effort in developing that. Similar way, if we worked in this generation, the future generation will be very happy with our developments. True? It's a cycle. It's a chain. Right? So, engineer is not only responsible for a present generation and he is also responsible for a future generation. The one who can think a step ahead in the scientific community or R&D layer is most welcome to be a part of, uh, you know, DRDO, ISRO, BARC, XYZ, including NASA America, Navigation and Spacecraft Agency. So, the success rate of, uh, uh, you know, I can say quality level, involvement, development, of course, the financial backup do is so high in R&D layer. So, hence the topmost field of, uh, you know, job developments, job settlements is first R&D, scientific layer, then chip designing, the very immediate one product layer, then product designing, then product applications. Then comes to speak about background software technology to optimize the products working to the different requirements of a human community. So, in this chain of uh, uh, technology, software, last IT is said to be the least one. And when you go on, R&D and science and technology, chip designing and chip developments, product designing and product developments, coming to speak about product applications and then a product interface with the human uh, requirements. That's you, sorry. That's you call it as uh, an IT background, what you needed. So, and the students of electronics and communications, instrumentation engineering, electrical and electronics are most eligible to take the top of science to become scientists in the world. I hope now you are enough motivated about the subject digital logic design to learn uh, well to use in your uh, future technologies. And... Uh, the future, uh, you know, 
uh, high, higher education modules, I can say, or job modules, I can say, which you can take based on digital or embedded systems, microcontrollers, microprocessors, and uh, further, etc., to take up. And which, uh, you know, technology is not using digital, every technology, mechanical technology, electrical technology, chemical technology, everywhere, right, the background, digital control applications are so high involved. So, I am happy to give this origin to you all where you are motivated to begin your subject digital logic design. Right from the Aristotle invention of biologics in 800 BC, right to the reaching away of DNA based chip, chip technology involving biological uh, you know, uh, structures in uh, digital chips where this technology is ruling, signal transmission rate is almost like a human feeling transmission rate. Thank you for all. And then uh, continuation, let us see what are the topics we have in this syllabus one by one to learn and this already we learned smallest in size fastest in rate anything smaller than sorry anything faster than light yes we have human feeling yeah uh, the in detailed uh, content of DLD and each and every uh, main title what are the subtitles the first topic number systems and data formats and these are the subtitles which you will be given all this to study. Then with logic gates, Boolean algebra. Then with K maps and prime implicants. Corn of maps for simplification. Then with combinational digital circuits. Combinational digital circuits. Then with Comparators and parity developers, encoders and decoders, muxes and demuxes, ADC DSE, A to D D to A circuits, A to D D to A converters, flip flops, sequential digital circuits, the very first topic flip flops, counters and registers, or sequence detectors. Counters, registers, and the sequence detectors. Sequential circuits later, memories and fundamentals of computer architecture. And logic families, logic IC families. Few topics are exclusive only for ECE, COA, and logic families. All the best to you all. Thank you. And uh, immediately after this, let me open. The topic number systems and data formats, the very first fundamental topic, base topic to understand the you know, base behind uh, digital logic design, numbers, conversions, additions, and then uh, operations and that, uh, structuring codes and that, how does computer big backend codes will work on, all this we learn in number systems and uh, data formats. We will continue to learn that topic as a first topic. Thank you. Today, let us discuss about the topic number systems and data formats which is the very fundamental base topic of the subject digital logic design, which has a lot of weightage for one mark questions in almost all the competitive exams, especially for Tripoli. Uh, you go with the Genco, Transco, Discom and state government examinations and uh, for all ECE and uh, other branches instrumentation. And you could even think about ARDO, ISRO, BARC, GATE. It has a wide coverage with the basic questions. Almost around uh, 25 to 30 concepts are there in this topic. Let us see one by one concept examples along with the previous gate questions do the possibilities and the very first topic of this chapter number systems and data formats is what the binary coded formats and their validity binary coded formats and their validity let us see this topic in the tabular format for an easier uh, understanding concept number one is binary coded formats validity the topics in the table sorry the titles in the table are number system base of the number system symbols used maximum symbol binary coded format uh, validity invalid and an example and let's begin to talk from a generic uh, form, base R number system, base is R.
if it is a base R number system, base is R, symbols used are 0 to R minus 1, maximum symbol is R minus 1 and binary coded format need not to be specified here, validity invalid uh, not necessary to speak in this level. For a base R number example, R power 0, R power 1, R square, R cube, etc. up to R power n minus 1. If it is fractional, R power minus 1, R power minus 1, R power minus 2, so on. And uh, let us speak about the second one, binary number system, BNS. For a binary number system, radix equal to 2, 2 valued logic and symbols are 0, 1, low and high, <coughs> two state logic, sorry. Maximum symbol is 1. And binary weights, are you well familiar? 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 square, 2 cube, etc. Validity invalid, we can speak from the next example. And a random example for a binary number, 101101.1011 binary. And let us see the immediate number system, nibble, nibble number system. Nibble in digital sounds 4, radix is equal to 4. And symbols used are 0 to 3. And maximum symbol is 3. And to quote 0 to 3, from this binary weights, 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 square, 2 cube, what are the weights to be taken? Can I say 2, 1? That means 2 power 1, 2 power 0. The first two weights of this can say binary coded nibble, BCN. Because 2 plus 1 equal to 3, nibble max requirement is also 3. Hence, 2, 1 can be a binary coded nibble. Less than or equal to 3, valid, no question of invalid. Because invalid comes into the picture only when the available weights are more than the requirement. Here requirement is 3, weights 2 plus 1 is also equal to 3, hence no question of invalid. Example, let us see together for, uh, you know, BCN and BCO, nibble and octal. And very next, you speak about the octal number system, ONS. For octal number system, radix is equal to 8, symbols are 0 to 7. And maximum symbol is 7. And binary coded format for octal number system is 4, 2, 1. 1, 2, the next weight is 4. This is called as BCO, binary coded octal. Less than or equal to 7 valid and no question of invalid. Here also, 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. Octal max requirement is also 7. Hence, there is no question of invalid. Now, coming to the picture. Converting this uh, binary number equivalent to nibble and octal. We knew two digit is what a BCN, three digit is what BCO, two weights of binary BCN, three weights of binary BCO. If we split the binary number into two digit format, that is octal, sorry, nibble. And if we split into three digit format, that is what octal. Uh, Let us do that. So, 0, 1, 1, 1. 1, 0. Point one zero one one binary coded nibble BCN uh, nibble equivalent of that 2 3 1 point 2 3 base 4 1 0 is 2 1 1 is 3 that's all known 2 3 1 point 2 3 base 4 now let us speak about uh, Three digit conversion to meet octal value. 101, 101, point, 101, 1 is left, add two more zeros to fill the number. And this is binary coded octal BCO. The octal equivalent of that is 5, 5, 5. 5.54 five base 8. 
uh, binary number split into two digit is what uh, nibble split into three digit as what octal and let's see the next two number systems decimal and hexadecimal now and decimal number system dns for dns radix equal to 10 symbols used are 0 to 9 maximum symbol is 9 binary coded format 1 2 4 next to 8 is 8 8421 is called as bcd speak about validity and invalid of this less than or equal to 9 valid greater than 9 invalid first time the question of invalid in binary coded table comes here because 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 15 decimal max requirement is only 9 hence 9 after it is invalid and uh, how many values are invalid after 9 you can say 10 to 15 are quoted as invalid bcd iv bcd so bcd is valid only for less than or equal to 9 and it is invalid for greater than 9 and let's see the next one hexadecimal number system hdns for a hexadecimal number system radix equal to 16 symbols are 0 to 9 comma a to f which is 10 to 15 representation of a to f is what 10 to 15 and maximum symbol is f binary coded format for this one is same 8421 called as bch less than or equal to f valid and no question of invalid because 8421 is 15 together and hex max requirement is also 15 hence there is no question of invalid now let me give a random example of uh, hexadecimal a b d point c1 base 16 some random example well now i have a question a very important question uh, we have seen four number systems binary nibble octal hexadecimal as we all know well binary is a computer language and uh, decimal is user language and uh, what about nibble octal hexadecimal why do we need to learn about them uh, when we knew binary and decimal uh, between user and computer it is comfortable to communicate and represent right then why do we unnecessarily need to learn about nibble octal and hexadecimal <coughs> sorry can anyone give the answer for this yeah why do we need nibble octal hexadecimal when a human and computer are comfortable with decimal and binary system uh, let me give an answer for this uh, with example yeah i'm just taking one zero one one zero one point one one zero one a base two number let me convert this into nibble octal hex just like earlier two split nibble three split octal four split hexadecimal come back to uh, two split one three two one three two point three one base four zero one is one 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 is three one zero is two one one is three zero one is one and three split to get octal one zero one one zero one five five one one zero six single one is left keep two more zeros so one double zero four base eight four digit one one zero one thirteen thirteen is d uh, one zero one zero is two point one one zero one is again thirteen d two d point d base sixteen by observing this tell me one thing binary seems to be lengthy nibble bit lesser 
and octal more compactive, hexadecimal is fine more compactive. Can I say nibble octal hexadecimal number systems are used to represent and recognize and to remember even lengthy binary numbers in easier format for a user convenience. Never computer internal hardware is related with nibble octal hexadecimal. Computer internal hardware purely works with only binary number system and user of course decimal. But these all will help to understand a binary system in an easier way for user. And let us see the very immediate uh, format converting decimal number into binary nibble octal hexadecimal. Decimal conversion to other form. Concept number two. <clears throat> one hundred and thirty one point three zero based in conversion to binary nibble octal hexadecimal. Generally, we all know well whenever a decimal number is converted into binary, if it is integer we do division by radix and if it is fractional we do multiplication with radix. We know well converting into binary division by 2 multiply by 2, converting into nibble division by 4 multiply by 4, octal by 8 multiply by 8. But here I do not want you to use a division and I want you to solve this without division. Uh, I mean uh, just going by 2 by 2 by 2 by 4 by 4 by 4 I feel it is a lower case level. Uh, let us use a matured and faster and a smarter approach converting decimal number into others. Shall we? Yeah. Uh, I am just taking binary weights 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128 and these are what the sequence of binary weights and number is 131, nearest to 8 is 128, I do not need beyond 256 will be access to the requirement. Now let me give you the answer, <coughs> 1 into 128 and I need only more 3 to get 131, 64 I do not need, 32 I do not need, 16 I do not need, 8 I do not need, 4 I do not need, 2 plus 1, 1, 1, 3, 128 plus 3 is 131, binary answer is ready. Without using division, fastly and smartly, adding predefined weights is better than division, right? Let us use that method. And for a fractional conversion, multiplication is the easiest way because remembering and adding fractional weights is not so easy like integers. So, let us go over the procedure. 0 0.30 multiply by 2, 0.6, 0 0.60 multiply by 2, 1.2. Point two zero multiply by two point four point four zero multiply by two point eight point eight zero multiply by two one point six point six zero multiply by two one point two you could see this 0.60 into 2, 1.2 got repeated and this part got repeated again. So, which part is repeated? This part is repeated, 1.2, 0.4, 0.8, 1.6, 1.6. When the repetition started, it is a never ending process, right? Yeah. Now, the answer for this uh, question is binary. 1 triple 0 double 0 1 1 point 
zero, one zero zero one, and this part one zero zero one. Again 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 one zero zero one. Never ending, as we explained. Now let us see how to convert this number. Easiest way into nibble, into octal, into hexadecimal. Keeping the reference of the previous table, you already understood. Binary split into two nibble, split into four. Sorry, binary split into two nibble, split into three octal, split into four hexadecimal. Use that procedure to get nibble, octal, hex numbers. Then going by division by four, division by eight, division by sixteen, silly, and all the ways to go. And let me give the answer. Uh, I just was to say uh, two digit equivalent. Yes, one one double zero double zero one zero point zero one zero zero one one zero zero one one seems to be zero zero one one getting repeated. And this is called as binary coded nibble. From this, repetition is zero three. Now the answer is two zero zero three point one zero three zero three repeating zero three zero three zero three. Base four. Let me convert into three digit split to get octal. Zero double one, triple zero, one zero. Add another zero to get uh, fill three digits. Point zero one zero, zero one one, zero zero one, one double zero, one one zero. Again zero double one. You could notice the value three getting repeated, <clears throat> and this is called as binary coded octal. And from this, we can observe three got repeated. Three, three. That means again those values will be repeated. The answer is two zero three point two three one four six again three. So three one four six is a repetition. Base eight. Let me go with hexadecimal answer. Four digit equivalent. Double zero double one. One triple zero. Point zero one zero zero. One one zero zero again one one zero zero. So one one zero zero repetition occurred. Binary coded hexadecimal. So one one zero is repeating. One one zero zero. The right answer is eight three four zero double one zero zero one zero zero four one one zero zero is twelve. Twelve is C. So C repeating. And base sixteen. For the question given previously, a uh, benefit of using nibble octal hexadecimal numbers, you could easily understand. Such a lengthy binary number. Has become easier in representing in the form of nibble, in the form of octal, in the form of hexadecimal. So, the different number systems nibble, octal, and hex are indeed used to make the user representation recognition simple uh, into the formats. The very immediate uh, concept. I mean, uh, otherwise, let me take one more example on this to see the shortest way to convert the number into the decimal number into this. Example two, and I have thirteen forty seven point two zero decimal conversion to binary nibble octal hexadecimal. Uh, the easiest way is go with the binary weights 
as we already discussed. The binary weights are 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. For the number given, 1347, 1024, the nearest to it, correct? Yes. <clears throat> Let us start from 1024. 1024 into 1, 512 will be excess 0, 256 can be taken, 1, 1024 plus 256. Uh, is it not 1280? Yes, it is. Uh, to get 1347, how much more is required? 1280, 20, 1347, yeah, 67. 67 more is required. 128 need not to. 64 can be taken. 64 plus 3, 67. 3 would be 2 plus 1. I don't need the remaining values. So, 1280, 64 and 3, 67. Over. 1347 is completed. Binary. Fastest way the answer is ready. Next, uh, fractional. 0. 0.2 into 2. 0. 0. 0.4. 0. 0.4 into 2. 0. 0.8. 0. 0.8 into 2. 1.6. 0. 0.6 into 2. 1.2. 0. 0.2 into 2. 0.4. Observe, the first value itself got repeated. So, the repetition is 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.6, 1.2. 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.6, 1 1.2. This first four values are getting repeated. Now, the overall answer for this question is together of 10, 10, 10. Three zeros double one point zero zero one one. Repetition is zero zero one one zero zero one one. Never ending. The repetition part is zero zero one one. From here, splitting into two digit nibble, splitting to three octal. Splitting to 4 hexadecimal, uh, you can easily do it. Now, the immediate uh, conversion is opposite. Binary, nibble, octal, hexadecimal, 2 decimal. Non-decimal number, 2 decimal number. Uh, concept number 4. Uh, concept 1 to 3, I think, yes. 10101.101 binary 2 decimal <clears throat> binary number converting into decimal the simplest way use the weights of the number base 2 weights 2 power 0 2 power 1 2 square 2 cube 2 power 4 2 power 5 by 2 by 4 and by 8 yes uh, overall multiplication with the radix powers and here division with the radix powers quite reverse to the previous procedure in the case of decimal to others uh, here division here multiplication others two decimal here multiplication here division now zero into something zero by something is zero then give the answer 32 plus 8 40 44 45 45 point 1 by 2 is point 0.5 0 by 4 is 0, 1 by, uh, sorry, 1 by 8. So, 1 by 8 is uh, 0 0.125, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.125, 0 0.625, based in, so, shortest way. And next example, let me take uh, 765.4 0 base. 8, 2 decimal, 
the fastest way. Apply the base 8 weights into 8 power 0, into 8 power 1, into 8 square by 8. 0 by something is 0. 7 into 64, uh, 420, 448. 448 plus 48 plus 5 plus 1 by 2 is 0.5. Over and base 8 answer is ready. And if it is hexadecimal, as an example, AC D point C 0 base 16 and uh, base 16 weights D into 16 power 0, C into 16 power 1, A into 16 square. C by 16. So 10 into 16 square 256. 2560 plus 12 into 16 192 plus D 13 plus 3 by 4. 0.75. C by 16 is 3 by 4, right? Uh, easiest way to any number into decimal. Simplest way is apply the weights of the number. Integer multiply with the weights, fractional divide with the weights, add them, answer is ready. Now you are clear with how to convert a decimal into others in a simplest way, how to convert others into decimal in the simplest way. Now let me take the immediate concept as binary addition. Concept number four. Binary addition. I am here with a question to all of you. Please notice. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. It is 5 ones. What is carry and what is sum? That's my question and I have options to you. Choice A, 1, 0, 1, 0. Choice B, 0, 1, 0, 1. Choice C, 1, 0, 1. Choice D, some other answer. Yeah. Come back to speak. When I Raise this question, many students have replied C as an answer, 1 comma 0. And uh, then giving my comment on this, whether it is correct or not, let's, let me explain the fundamental procedure of binary addition. Shall we? Yes. Here, binary addition fundamentals. Carry. Sum. Yeah, 0 plus 0, no carry, no sum, right? 0 plus 1, no carry, 1 sum. 1 plus 0, no carry, 1 sum. 1 plus 1, 1 carry, 0 sum. 1 plus 1 plus 1, 1 carry, 1 sum. And next... 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1. 5 ones. And uh, 6 of ones. 8 of ones. At last, 10 of ones. When I raise this question, many have told me, Sir, uh, beyond the 3 ones, neither uh, available in the textbooks nor the teacher taught funny. The fundamental procedure of adding binary digits, any number of digits, let it be of any number of digits, 4, 5, n, 10. And 4 ones, I'm just writing like this, 1, 0, 0. 4 is 1, 0, 0, right? 5 ones, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. 6 ones, 1, 1, 0. 8 ones, 
Can you notice one thing? Did you notice one thing? I'm sorry. So, when I'm writing the values, always I was making sure least significant bit LSB kept in the place of sum remaining whole in the part of carry. Yes, I was making sure that. Uh, whenever you add any number of binary digits, from the answer, LSB is only the sum, remaining whole will be carry. By that, 5 ones is how much? Here, 1 0 with 1. But what answer majority of people have chosen? 1 with 0. Wrong. And right answer is 1 0 with 1. The fundamental deal is, whenever you add binary numbers, binary digits, I, I feel, number of ones, from that answer, always LSB the sum remaining is carry. Blindly follow this. Uh, can I give you a proof for this by just taking a small example? Yes, let us. Then here is an example. One one zero one. One zero one one. One 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 one. One zero zero one. One 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 zero. Zero triple one. Zero one one one. One zero one one. One one. 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Let us add these numbers by the procedure what we had. Base 2, all these are. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 ones. 9 is 1, double, 0, 1. 1, 0, 0, 1. 1 here, 1, double, 0 here. Single digit is some remaining carry. 1, double, 0 is 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 is 1, 0, 1 and 1. 1, 0, 1, 1. So, 1, 0, 1 is 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 is 1, 1, 0, 0. 1, 1, 0 and 0. 1, 1, 0 is 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, there is nothing to carry. So, 14 is triple 1, 0. The binary answer. Now, let me cross check what is that? Uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. And this is 64. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. And this is 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. What is the total value? 64 and 32. 96. 96 is 16. 1, 12. 1, 12 and 3. 1, 1, 5. So, the value of this is 115. If we get a same by adding all this, I think our procedure is correct. Let us uh, do that. Thirteen, eleven, fifteen, uh, nine, fourteen. 7, 7, 11, 13, 15. Let's make an addition. 13 and 11, 24. 24 and 15, 39. 39 and 9, 48. 48 to 14. 62, 7. 69, 7. 76, 11. 87, 13. 115. Happy my number is equivalent to 115. That means the procedure what we followed is exactly correct. What is that? Whenever you add any number of binary digits, binary ones, from that LSB is a sum, remaining is carry. From here, binary addition for you is so simple, you don't need any calculations, just straight away you can put the answer. And next, based on this, let us see non-binary addition, nibble, octal and hexadecimal. Concept number 5. Concept 5 here, non-binary addition. Let us see different examples to go. Eight. 
Example number one. We have a nibble number. Three two double three. Three one two three. Two three two three. Three two double three. Addition of all this base four numbers. Uh, this case generally people add like this, converting into binary, then adding them, reconverting into nibble. Uh, silly and lengthier way even. Uh, let us use a smarter and faster method. Here, six nine twelve. Here twelve is the decimal number. Let us have a base four equivalent. Base four equivalent is four. Square four power one four power zero. Can I say three into four twelve? Three zero base four. Yeah, three zero. Six eight eleven fourteen. How do you represent fourteen base ten? Three into four twelve two fourteen. Base four. Three two. Four five eight nine eleven. How do you represent eleven? Two into four, eight, three, two, three. Five, seven, ten, thirteen. How do you represent thirteen? Three into four, twelve, and one, three, one, three, one. Simple and faster. Base four addition is done. Similar way, let us see octal and hexadecimal eleven. And here is example two. Octal addition. Seventy six fifty seven. Forty seven sixty seven. Sixty three forty five. Seventy six seventy seven. Adding base eight values. Here. Fourteen nineteen twenty six. Twenty-six is a decimal number. Putting in base eight form. Yeah, base eight form is eight power zero, eight power one. Yes, twenty-six is three into eight, twenty-four, two. Three to base eight. Ten, fourteen, twenty, twenty-five. Twenty-five is three into eight, twenty-four, one. Three one. Nine, twelve, nineteen, twenty-five, three, one, ten, sixteen, twenty, twenty-seven, twenty-seven is three into eight, twenty-four, three, 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 simple, three, three, base eight. A direct form of uh, adding, so octal numbers into addition. Similarly, let us see the last one, example three. Hexadecimal addition. Uh, A B D nine. C F A E. C nine D A. B five C E. Addition of uh, hexadecimal numbers. Come back to speak. Nine plus C. Uh, Fourteen plus nine. Twenty three. Ten. Thirty-three and fourteen, forty-seven. Forty-seven, the decimal number, in the form of base sixteen. Sixteen power one, sixteen power zero. So two into sixteen, thirty-two, plus fifteen remainder. Fifteen is F, right? Yeah. It is two F. Uh, C plus two, fourteen, plus thirteen, twenty-seven. Plus ten, thirty-seven. Plus thirteen, thirty-seven plus thirteen, fifty. Fifty base ten. Three into sixteen, forty-eight. Two remainder. So here, three two. Eight plus nine, seventeen. Plus fifteen, thirty-two. Plus eleven, forty-three. Two into sixteen, thirty-two. Eleven remainder. Eleven is B, so two B. Uh, B plus two thirteen, 
plus 12, 25 plus 12, 37 plus 10, 47, 47 is 2f already there. So, 2f b 2f base 16. Such a fast way, we could directly do nibble addition, noctal addition, hex addition. The simplest fundamental is always whenever you add any numbers, if you want to carry something, except at least the remaining all should be carried. So, don't just go a lengthier way for all on a base fundamental level. Always try to search for the faster and, uh, and a short uh, methods to no, also solve in a quicker way in the competitive exam. Always remember, competitive exam is a time-bounded examination. Uh, and moreover, digital logic design, as I have already mentioned in the introduction, it is a logical subject, neither mathematical nor physics involved. You do not need a lengthy, you know, ways to go to solve this uh, subject and questions. Always, you know, have a faster approaches. Concept number six, let us see a BCD addition. BCD addition. I am here with an example. Nine BCD plus seven BCD, and here I have options to you. Uh, nine plus seven is sixteen. Sixteen is one four zeros. How is that? One plus one zero with carry one. 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 Like how nine plus seven is sixteen. And uh, here, and this is option A what I have. Option B, this one is removed, only four zeros. Option C, this one is added back, triple zero one. Option D, zero 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 one one, zero 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 zero. This one. And option E, nine plus seven is sixteen, right? And uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, double 1, 0. And I have another option, F, none. You have a lot of options to choose. Generally, uh, is it that uh, better to have a less number of options or more number of options? Less number of options is always simple. More number of options is always confusing. Anyhow, what answers you would be choosing? When I gave this question to majority of the students, they have chosen, I still remember, uh, D or E. Many people went with the D or E, 10 or 16. I do not want to comment anything in this level. Let me give you the fundamental base uh, method of solving this BCD addition. Then you will obviously come to the, come to know about the answer. Here. Nine plus seven sixteen. The answer appeared. Is it not greater than nine? Yes, it is. Uh, you know well, greater than nine, and B C D is invalid. Invalid B C D. Whenever B C D is invalid, we have to add six. Add 6. So, hence 0 plus 6 is equal to 6, the right answer. Neither 1, 6, nor 16, nor 1, 0. Just 6, the right answer. So, D wrong, E wrong, and none is the correct answer. And the right answer is only 6. And let me tell you. Why should we add 6 if BCD is greater than 9? And when you observe decimal values, BCD values, 0 to 9 BCD, as we know, valid. 10 to 15 BCD, as you know, invalid. Uh, how many values are invalid? It is very close here. 
invalid. Six places are invalid. Six places are invalid in base ED. Uh, skip six places ahead after nine. I repeat, skip six places ahead after nine. Is it not uh, plus six? Yes. Ahead plus six. Before minus six. That's what uh, we add six to get uh, a valid BCD value. So whenever BCD is greater than nine, add six to make it valid. Now, let me give you a shortcut for the question given. Question is nine BCD plus seven BCD, correct? In digital, sorry, in mathematics, I'm sorry, 9 plus 7 is 16. Remove this one, 6 is the right answer. You go by fundamental procedure, 9 plus 7 is 16, 1, 4, zeros. 16 is greater than 9, add 6, 0 plus 6 equal to 6 here appeared. Similar way, shortcut is 9 plus 7, 16, cancel this one, 6 is the right answer. And uh, one more example. 5 BCD plus another 5 BCD. Uh, give me the shortcut faster. 5 plus 5 equal to 10. Cancel 1. 0 the right answer. Isn't it? Uh, fundamental way. 5 plus 5, 10. 10 is 1, 0, 1, 0. It is greater than 9. So, add 6. So, here 6. 10 plus 6, 16. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Anyhow, you don't need to use carry value. So, this is cancelled. 0 BCD right answer. BCD always valid for 0 to 9, whether it is BCD digit or BCD sum. BCD sum should always be less than or equal to 9. The sum appears 0 is less than or equal to 9. Shortcut and fundamental method, both. Whichever you feel comfortable, you are welcome. Uh, of course, always shortcut is the fastest and comfortable way to go. And the concept number 7, let us go with numbers and limitations. And this is the most important topic of this uh, chapter, number systems and data formats. Based on this, uh, two or three frequent uh, you know, gate questions are, are there you know, so to solve. In the future, I will just apply this technique, how you get use this one. And the topic is numbers and their limitations. Numbers and limitations. I'm taking binary. Binary number system. Radix equal to 2, right? 0 the first number, 1 the next number. 1 after. 1 plus 1 is 0 along with the carry 1, isn't it? 1 binary plus 1 is 0 with carry 1. And uh, what about 0 minus 1? Sorry. What about 0 minus 1? If you go back to 1 again, if 1 plus 1 is 0, what is 0 before is 1 only, right? So, 0 binary minus 1 is equal to 1, but 0 binary minus 1 will not go and you need a borrow. So, borrow value is 1. Can I say? So, 0 minus 1 is 1 with borrow 1. In digital, hope you know well, there is no significance of borrow. It is always a carry. 
So concluded, 1 plus 1 is 0 with carry 1, 0 minus 1 is 1 with borrow 1, but borrow is carry noted as, so 1 with carry 1. I repeat, 1 after 0 with carry 1, 0 before 1 with borrow 1. Please remember this representation, the most important one. Now let me go with uh, nibble number system. Radix equivalent to 4. 0 to 3, the numbers, base 4. And 3 after, so 3 plus 1 is 0 with the carry 1. 3 plus 1 is not 4. Of course, 4 in the form of base 4 number. So, maximum plus 1, 0 with carry 1. And what is 0 before? That means 0 minus 1. Again, 3. And if it is 3 after 0, 0 of before 3 only, right? You should be remembering that. Now, coming back to speak. Base 4. 3 base 4 plus 1 is equal to 0 with the carry 1. Similarly, 0 base 4 minus 1 is equal to 3 with the borrow 1. But you will call borrow as carry, I already noted you. Now, can I say 3 plus 1 is 0 with carry 1, 0 minus 1 is 3 with carry 1? Just like 1 plus 1 is 0 with carry 1, 0 minus 1 is 1 with carry 1. Similarly, and let us go with the uh, octal number system. ONS radix equal to 8. 0 to 7 the numbers. And the 7 after plus 1 is 0 with the carry 1, right? And uh, what about uh, 0 minus 1? Ultimately 7. So, conclude 7 base 8 plus 1 is equal to 0 with the carry 1. 0 base 8 minus 1 equal to 7 with the carry 1. So, it is borrow, in fact, we will call it as carry. And uh, the last one in the system, hexadecimal number system, HDNS, whose radix equal to, and symbols in this are 0 to 9, A to F. So, please tell me. F hexadecimal plus 1, 0 with the carry 1, 0 hexadecimal minus 1, of course, F with the borrow 1, but representation is carry. So, A after, sorry, F after 0 with carry 1, 0 before F with borrow 1, that should be remembered always. Now, why do not you make a formula generic using all these things, just give a generic formula base R system, 0 the first number, R minus 1 the last number and R minus 1 plus 1 is always 0 with the carry 1, right? Then 0 minus 1, 0 base R minus 1 is equal to r minus 1 with the carry 1. r minus 1 is maximum. So, of course, r minus 1 is 1 in binary, right? So, base 2. So, you can always say that r minus 1 plus 1 is 0 with carry 1. 0 minus 1 is r minus 1 with carry 1. Carry value is always a borrow, you can say. Overall, can I just note one thing? Mm. maximum number that is r minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 0 0 is a minimum number right with the carry 1 similarly 
मिनिमम नंबर दैट इज जीरो माइनस वन इज इक्वल टू आर माइनस वन दैट इज मैक्सिम विथ बारो वन बट विल कॉल इट एस कैरी ओवरऑल मैक्सिमम प्लस वन इज मिनिमम मिनिमम माइनस वन इज मैक्सिम बोथ द केसेस कैरी इज अपियर्ड और इन द केस ऑफ एडिशन इट इज कैरी इन द केस ऑफ सब्ट्रैक्शन इट इज बारो फाइनली बाइनरी वन प्लस वन जीरो विथ कैरी वन जीरो माइनस वन वन विथ कैरी वन निबल थ्री प्लस वन जीरो विथ कैरी वन जीरो माइनस वन थ्री विथ कैरी वन ऑक्टल सेवन प्लस वन जीरो विथ कैरी वन एंड जीरो माइनस वन सेवन विथ कैरी वन हेक्साडिजमल एफ प्लस वन जीरो विथ कैरी वन एंड जीरो माइनस वन एफ विथ कैरी वन एंड इन इन एनी नंबर सिस्टम मैक्सिमम नंबर प्लस वन मिनिमम विथ कैरी वन मिनिमम माइनस वन मैक्सिमम विथ कैरी वन दिस फंडामेंटल विल बी हेल्पफुल अलॉर्ड इन द फर्दर अप्रोच to solve many you know competitive questions in a faster way i can say as a shortcut we can use them concept number 8 let us go with comparing uh, binary coded formats with binary bcd with binary bco with binary bco with bi bch with binary i repeat comparing binary coded formats with binary is what your next concept number 8